Hi everyone, I'm Carlo Libertini, and I'm here today with Tony Maserati and Justin Hergit. He's taken time out of his very busy schedule to uh, help talk about Melodyne and the state of audio editing today and where it's going tomorrow. So, Tony, thank you first for being here. It's my pleasure. Uh, it's my pleasure, too. You know, Since Selimar you're in my you. studio, I thought it'd be <laughs> a good place for us to meet. <laughs> That's right. Very gracious. And uh, let's jump right in. Let's talk about Melodyne. And, you know, recently we were discussing first impressions. First impressions are big <clears throat> on many levels for many different reasons, for many different situations. But talking about audio editing, uh, do you either of you have any first impressions of Melodyne or experiences using it or seeing it used? Um, well, the first time I saw it used was um, the uh, producer who shares uh, space in this building, Peter Rafelson, was, was, uh, was creating, uh, you know, one of those typical uh, uh, modern effects for, uh, for a singer's voice where, um, y you know, you hear the, uh, the absolute tuning and he's changing it around. Uh, we all know the effect. And, um, but he did it in such a creative way because he was able to split uh, long notes and make them shorter and change their pitch in interesting ways so he could actually change the melody in really interesting ways. And, uh, and so how, of course- How did it, it sound? Well, it sounded pretty amazing. I mean, it's obviously this was an effect, so there wasn't a sonic quality that we mm -hmm. were looking for. It was more of a fun, interesting effect that we were using for this chorus piece, and there were several uh, chorus uh, vocals involved, and um, and it turned out amazing. It was it was so much fun to see him do it that that's when immediately I reached out to you and told Justin we've got a. We've got to get this uh, this going on our rig. Absolutely. So, can, so in our downtime, we can just play with vocals and make people yeah. sound weird. <laughs> Plus or our own voice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Plus you don't want to get left behind. <laughs> well, hell no. <laughs> what about yourself, Justin? Um, just the, the, the ease of use and, and, and the quickness to get around in it. And ever since uh, you can hear the pitch in real time, it's just been yeah. a great change to, to make it that much quicker to find what you need. Yeah. Speaking of pitch... It's one major application within Melodyne is how you can affect pitch and literally use it as a creative or a corrective application. Mm -hmm. But there are other tools like timing. We were talking about timing yes. the other day. Have you had an experience with using uh, Melodyne to fix timing problems or have you seen that? Yeah, yeah, it's actually pretty good at it. Um, we were doing something the other day with the guitar, right? Mm. Um, well, we were, yeah. Yeah, yeah and it, it you know, just snap it in and it, it does great things. Yeah. Yeah, timing can be also creative or corrective application too, I guess. Yeah, the mm -hmm. the the artist that we were working with when you were here mm -hmm. the other day, um, uh, I think there must have been, I don't know, 15 tracks of background vocals yeah. Yeah. that we were trying to, uh, very little pitch correction, but, but uh, more timing correction. And... Uh, and it actually got so close that we had to vary it because it just wasn't, you know, it wasn't natural enough. Um, um, but it was, it, it solved the problem that the artist was hearing. And, um, and she was and satisfied. Really yeah, she was very satisfied that's and great. it helped a lot. Yeah, that's um, great. And it, it happened quite easily as well, which of course is the important part. Yeah, you know, I know from my own experience with working with Melodyne, I believe, I've, and I've always said this, whether I'm teaching Melodyne or using Melodyne or helping my friends produce with Melodyne, is that you can do so much with so little. You know, you've got these six editing tools, main editing tools, where you can adjust the amplitude, which is great for compensating poor microphone technique. You know, a lot of times, uh, mic technique is something that, mm -hmm. that either an artist doesn't have time uh, to correct or a young artist doesn't have technique. Um, and there was one occasion where <clears throat> uh, at the beginning of a song, you know, it was a lower pitch and, and you know, the, 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 the vocalist was a bit too close to the microphone and, mm -hmm. and this, it sort of 
just a bit too much resonance involved. And we were able to change just a couple of those notes that got in the way and sort of made the, right. you know, took up too much space in the mix. And we were able to sort of, you know, change the format so that it really didn't affect too much. So do you feel the, like, this is how I feel. I'd love to know how you feel. Um, when I'm using Melodyne and I'm done editing, if I'm using it more of a corrective application, I'm, I'm fixing it at the source. So I'm kind of making it sound like it was recorded that way initially. Mm -hmm. Then, which means that when I'm mixing, I have a far better and easier time working with sure. with the audio afterwards. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's one of Melodyne's greatest gifts is how you can actually keep the fidelity of the sound if you choose. Yeah. I got to tell you, I mean, really, you both, yourself, of course, I know you've worked with some amazing artists, if I may name a few. Um, Couple. Yeah? Yeah, sure. Who are some of the most recent ones you've, you've worked with? Uh, Beyonce, Lady Gaga. Yeah. Uh, Jason Mraz. Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> to name a few. Yeah, Jason Mraz just yeah. recently as well. Just one quick last question. Considering the artists that, you know, we work with today, uh, how would Melodyne fit into your future workflow? I mean, do you see creative opportunities? more and more with the application working within your custom workflow? Well, I think that, I mean, obviously continuing to use it in the way that we already do, which is, um, uh, which is, which gives our clients and our artists um, some choices, which essentially mm -hmm. is all it is, because ultimately yeah. they make the decision whether or not they're going to accept that variation in their performance. Um, and uh, and it allows us to do it if we think it's necessary mm -hmm. and play it for them and have them decide whether or not it's something they want to use or maybe just use it for one line or something like that. And then also the idea of being able to, uh, you know, to implement a variety of musical changes if, if we want to layer something in the mix stage and instead of playing it, which, as you can see, I don't really have any keyboards here. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, to be able to use Melodyne to export a MIDI file and then go ahead and, and try different sounds underneath an already existing sound is actually quite interesting to us. Um, yeah. And it gives us a dynamic and a range in, in the environment of mixing that, you know, normally you would have to hire in uh, a player. Right. Um, right. Or have, have uh, you know you know, do a co-production or whatever. This way we can layer it in. The artist and producer can have a listen mm -hmm. um, and, we and we can make choices right there. Yeah, yeah. Choices so. are always a good thing to have choices. Yeah. Well, there are going to be some really amazing advancements in uh, the new versions of Melodyne coming out and I'm sure you'll both be able to take advantage Great. of that in the future. Yeah. I'll make sure yeah. of that for you. Nice. But I really, from the bottom of my heart, personally, but on behalf of Melodyne and everyone at Music Marketing, uh, thank you so much for your time, really, Tony. It's a pleasure. I know you're super busy, and thank you. Thanks Justin, so thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, my name's Carlo Libertini. Thanks for watching.